Hey, I'm Dr. Dino Pappas with the Rosti Rehab Centers in Northwest Hills, Austin, Texas. Um, I, I drew a little bit of a schematic here about how I view things in terms of mechanical pain syndromes and mechanical pain. That's pain from mechanics of how you move. That's joint pain, muscle pain, soft tissue based pain and soft tissue based problems. Um, I've seen a lot of um, comments recently on social media that pretty much um, musculoskeletal pain, we don't have a consensus way of treating it, of evaluating it, of diagnosing it, of making sure that we are matching the, the most evidence-based and correct therapies to what's needed for the patient in the presentation. So I came up with this little schematic. This is not the only schematic out there. This is kind of what I'm thinking in terms of how I view, how I process the information to make sure that I'm not missing a step, to make sure that I, I can get patients better in a rapid amount of time and know where I'm lacking somewhere in the process. So usually the first thing that I do is when a patient calls in, I make sure that we show concern, caring, and empathy. We're dealing with patients, we're dealing with human beings, we're dealing with feelings, emotions, and people. These are not robots. These are people that actually have thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And because of that, we want to make sure from the first time that they talk to you, the first time that you evaluate them, that there's concern, there's care, there's empathy. There's a famous quote. They don't care how much you know unless, that you, unless they know that you care first. So that's what we try to do initially in the office. The second thing I see on the pyramid is a comprehensive physical examination. These are your standard orthopedic tests, your standard neurological tests, your standard vascular tests, basically things that you were trained for as a physician or a physical therapist as an athletic trainer. If you're treating mechanical pain, you want to know, is this purely structural? And if this purely is structural and you don't have the tools to treat that, a torn ACL and a 20-year-old wrestler or a 22-year-old football player, etc., you need to make sure you have the tools to assess and address that and to refer that patient to the right, par the right party. So the second step up on my pyramid is a comprehensive physical assessment. After that, I use the McKenzie method. Um, it's one of the best tools that I've found to help me assess and classify. And that word is critical and important. Classification is the process by which you perform a mechanical examination and process the data, sift through the data, to assign patients to one of several syndromes. Those syndromes in the McKenzie method are derangement, dysfunction, postural syndrome, or other for the spine. They also include contractile dysfunction and articular dysfunction in the extremities. Essentially, you can match the right treatment. Is it exercise? Is it advice? Is it posture modification? Is it isometric exercise? Is it eccentric exercise? Basically, classifications help you match the right treatment to get the right strategy for the patient. And that's why I like the McKenzie method at this step of the pyramid. Again, is this classification, is it structural, is this functional, and if this is derangement, is this reducible? Again, trying to get rapid outcomes, outstanding outcomes, and reproducibility is why I use the McKenzie method here. Next, I move into the concept of movement assessment. Uh, I know some patients and some providers will have movement assessment lower on the rung, lower on the pyramid, but I like to put the fires out, make sure that the pain is gone, make sure that I'm seeing an accurate assessment of how people move because we know people in pain do not move the same as, they, as if they were not in pain. So this right here is on top of the McKenzie method, get patients out of pain, classify, then apply my movement assessments. I use components of the SFMA. I use components, components of Craig Liebenson's MAG-7. I also use components of side bridge endurance, um, uh, flexor endurance, extensor endurance. Any type of movement assessment right here is where I see this on my category of my pyramid. Why? I'm checking for regional independence. Is there something in this category here that could change how I classify the patient? Is there something in this category here of movement assessment that can alter my strategies of how I'm progressing patients? Or if I'm failing with these traditional methods, it gives me another layer to sift through the data to see if there's something missing in the clinical picture. On top of that, I use components of the F FMS, the functional movement screens. It's a simple screen. I know much, is, much has been made about it. I simply use it as a way to transition the patient in my office from pain to performance. That is, a patient comes in with pain and they are looking for something more. And this is simply a tool or baseline to say you've graduated from one phase of care, we are obtaining some data and some, base, some baselines to move you into the next phase of care. That's how I use it. I know that can be debated, however, that's how I use it in the office in this organized framework. On top of that, 
a patient is moving into the performance, what performance measures best uh, are they suited for? Which, what are their goals? What are their needs? What are their wants? And we design and look at sports and task specific tests. Maybe it's a shuttle run. Maybe it's a vertical jump. Maybe it's a standing broad jump. Maybe it's a 40 yard dash. Whatever that task specific thing that they need the most, I'm going to give them at this point. Not sooner, but later. Why? Because this is very specific. Whereas these are general categories, this is moving into more what the patient specifically demands for the activity that they want. And the last thing on my ladder in my pyramid is sports and task specific training, beast mode training. Now that we know what their wants are, now that we know what their needs are, now that we know what they're, what they're training for, what they're looking for, let's, let's take off the handcuffs, let's take off the shackles, let's enable success. Let's teach and train only what is necessary, be able to test it and retest it to know that we are making progress. So this is how I view things. Again, concern, caring, and empathy, comprehensive physical exam, using the McKenzie method to help me sift through the layers, moving into the movement assessment category, then components of the SM FMS as we transition from pain to performance, sports and task specific tests specific to what they want, and then remove the gloves. Let's enable success by training, uh, designing a training program specifically for their needs and their concerns. You may do it a little bit differently. Uh, I'd like to actually know that. So if you get a chance in the comment section, please let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you. I'm Dr. Dino Pappas.